Two weeks ago, the Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Tallon, said the education of the girl child was a top priority for her ministry. She's calling for support for girls to stay in school and complete their education. This is coming on the backdrop of data, which shows that the dropout rate of girls is higher than boys, and that participation in the sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields are lower for girls than boys. These in turn affect the number of women in decision-making rooms in the public and private sectors. Our school administrator and teaching fellow at Teach for Nigeria, Grace Anuforo, is joining us to talk girl child education. Good morning, uh, Grace. Good morning. Okay, I want us to start off first with talking about the value of educating the girl child. Okay. Well, um, there's a very... Um, there's a very pressing need. There's a need for girls to be educated because um, generally, let's even come down to it. Generally, we all know that in the average home, the woman, um, a, a mother, a mother cannot be comfortable, cannot rest until her kids are okay. So just imagine when a woman doesn't have the means, doesn't have the resources to take care of her family. Every every mother wants her child to be fine. Every mother wants to take her child, send her child to school. Every mother wants her child to be successful, you know, and all that. So just imagine when women do not have the resources to do that. They can't, they cannot take care of their family, which is why we have to, um, there's a very um, pressing need for girls to be educated from women who have that, uh, that ability to be able to take care of their family the way they want to. Okay, so how about the factors that are, you know, inhibiting this this very important issue? You said what? I didn't how about it. the factors, the impediments to, you know, girl-child education? Okay, first off, um, gender inequality, I would start with that. I think gender inequality covers everything. You know, when there's gender inequality, you think that the girl is not as useful as the boy, and so there's really no need to um, invest in her future. And when you think that a girl child is not as important as a boy child, you think that I mean, she, her life ends in the kitchen. And so <clears throat> this is why we have um, a high rate of child marriage in Northern communities and even in several parts of Africa. Yeah, you know, and um, also there's this there's this societal um, the society believes that the girl child or women generally are made for are made for sexual pleasure for men. They are made to be inferior to the male gender. So why do you have to waste your resources, waste your time, waste your investment on somebody who's not as important as the other person? So this is like gender inequality is the basic, is a major impediment to to girl child education. Um, is, is any of that changing in the last uh, few years? Have we been able to make any steps uh, to change some of all those uh, narratives and to invest more in, in um, you know, female uh, girl-child education in Nigeria? Well, um, I believe that uh, nothing really, from my own perspective, nothing really has been done except that um, we have a couple of organizations, we have a couple of individuals that are doing, you know, awesome jobs to ensure that girls go to school. For example, I can speak of my own organization, the, um, the Graciela Initiative. Uh, two years ago, we had to, we did a research uh, on child marriage in the North and we linked it to girl child education. And we, we discovered that um, girls, um, girls do not get to go to school as a shoe because of child marriage. So when a, a child as little as eight years has to be, you know, has to be married up to an old man, she gets to drop us from school and we send her to her husband's house. So we decided to have um, we have a partnership with um, NGOs in the North, a particular organization that's the Ikra Foundation. And we were able to um, select a couple of girls who had to drop out of school and some of them who had, who had never been to school before. Girls had, as old as seven, eight, you know, and we had to, you know, through partnerships, raise money to put these girls in the package as well. We have been doing that for two years now. We try to see how we can reduce child marriage. And we have to, because another thing that is limiting your education right there is experience. So we have to bring on board 
um, relevant stakeholders like the religious um, leaders, community leaders, parents, and parents have to sign a consent form to ensure that they allow these girls to enjoy our scholarship scheme and not pull them out because of marriage. So allow them to finish their basic education before you will think about, you know, think about marriage. So that's organi my organization and a couple of others that I know that are trying to see how they can put girls into school. I'm also thinking of putting girls in Vegas where I live. I live somewhere in Ogun State, Chicago. I'm trying to see how we can pull out girls in Vegas from the streets. I'm working with the local government to see how we can do this and see how we can have more girls in school, it is very important because women are actually like you know the backbone of homes, and we need more women having resources, having the means to take care of their families the way they want to. So, when, when when we look at you know government efforts in this regard, is this something we can praise, or you know say they really are lacking? You know, in terms of promoting, you know, girl-child education, enrollment in schools, limiting child marriage, legislating laws to just ensure that girls are more involved in nation building. I didn't get that question. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. I said, how would you score the efforts of government in this regard? You know, in making sure that more more girl-child are educated. Okay. Um. Well. Uh, well, I've, I've not really, I've not really seen much. Honestly, I've not seen much because even, even I read somewhere um, the act, the Child Rights Act, about how girls are not girls below the age of eighteen should not get married, should not be allowed to get married, something like that. You know that they shouldn't get married until they are eighteen and old. But I see it everywhere that girls below eighteen are getting married, and everybody is happy about it. Nobody is talking about it. And we expect that the government, you know, or we expect that certain people in certain positions should talk about it or should should um, arrest people in court, arrest people who are causing this. But nothing is being done. So I really don't see, I don't see anything, you know, and it's really, it's, it's really, um, it's, these are the things, I feel really sad, I feel really bad when I see these girls get married off. Sometimes, even without their own, sometimes they are used to it. I mean, they get born into the the... You know, they, they, get, they get born into it and they already tell them that this is what you're going to do at this particular age and they're okay with it because there's nothing they can do. And the government is, there's really nothing going on. What I can see is there's free education. I know about Ogun State, there's free education for everyone. But there's really nothing, nothing for girls. You know, there's really nothing to balance education because from research, we have more male literacy rates, about 79.5 or there about percent. I will have about 50% for females. So what is being done to balance that? Nothing is being done and it's really sad. It's really sad. I really wish we can have, you know, government bodies, certain individuals, people who have the ability to help us to reduce the child marriage in Nigeria especially. Well, you know, th those are things that we've, of course, uh, spoken about in the past, you know, and I believe that, you know, we're still working on, um, you know, hopefully there will be more bills here and there uh, to change um, underage marriage and some of all of that, you know, in Nigeria. Uh, but there's people who would argue that the statistics concerning girl-child education is not exactly the way it is being painted. There is a lot of young Nigerian girls who have been sent to school. Um, um, in the country. So would you say otherwise? Would you stick to your point and say um, statistics that you have show that the girl child is less educated in Nigeria? Okay, well, I'll speak from my experience. I started the, I'm a passionate girl child, a girls rights activist and I've been into the girl child business since I remember 2014 or whatever. And so I'm going to use my experience. From my experience, from my experience, even as a teaching fellow in Teach for Nigeria, you know, girl, boys are more enrolled in school than girls. So let's even let me use that. Let me use my experience. I see more more boys in school than girls. I mean, for public education, I'm not talking about private schools. For public education, what I have noticed is that more girl, more boys are in school. And even when I was serving during my NYC in the streets, I noticed that sometimes we have a lot of girls. They are in school here. Yeah? But sometimes they don't get to come to school. And when they come the following day or maybe a week later, you ask them, they say that they have to go to the market with their mom. Or there's this pink thing going on in that place that moms um mom pimp their girls, moms pimp their girls out to older men for money. So 
if you say that the statistics, or if people say that the statistics is lying or eating or being unrealistic, what about what we are seeing around? What about our experiences? What about, I mean, I'm, I've, I've conducted several interviews with women and girls, and my experience is sometimes when I when I scream, when I shout, when I make noise on social media, people don't understand. They think I'm just I'm just being too too dramatic. Or is what I, I I'm, I'm reacting based on what I have seen, you know, based on my experiences. All right. It's not true. The statistics are actually correct. Indeed, more indeed, boys, Grace. more girls. Yes, indeed, Grace. Indeed, Grace. The female literacy rate in Nigeria is way, way less, uh, you know, than that yeah. of males. So thank you very much yeah. for your time and thoughts on this very important issue. We hope to continue discussing it and, you know, creating more advocacy and awareness for on the importance of girl-child education in Nigeria. So thanks again and have a great day. Thank you. All right. That's where we wrap it up today on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's been a full day today talking about the allegations of land grab by Ned Oku, girl child education, talking about attacks by unknown gunmen in southeastern parts of Nigeria and how residents are resorting to self-help as well as a promising young Nigerian, a 21-year-old, who's now found himself on the wrong side of the law. Oh, you keep calling him promising. He's smart. Only smart people will be able to pull off fraud. Truth or false? He's a criminal. <laughs> Stay with us. Uh, of course, the news comes up next at 9 a.m. If you missed out on any of these conversations, remember to join us on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube channel, also at Plus TV Africa. Uh, I am Osao Ogbonwa. And I am Aneta Felix. Bye-bye.